So let's take a look at how to set up a Chauvin Arnu power energy logger. This could be a PEL 102, 103 or PEL 105, but here we're going to be using the PEL 103. The first thing you need to do is to connect and add the instrument to the software. We've shown how to install this free software in another video on the Chauvin Arnu channel. The first job is to add the instrument, so click the Add Instrument icon. As you can see from the screen, there are a few different ways to connect your PEL. In this instance, we're going to be connecting by USB. The lead is supplied with your PEL unit. Select USB and click Next. The computer will automatically scan for the connected PEL. Clicking Next will start the connection process, which may take a few moments. Once the connection has been established, the Finish icon will be clickable. On the left-hand side, we can now see the PEL with a green tick, confirming that it's connected. You can also see here any recorded sessions or real-time data. Now, with the device connected, we need to set it up for the installation you want to take recordings on. This page shows all the information for the PEL that's connected. Clicking on the Configuration tab, we can adjust the settings on the PEL. The first screen is the General Information page showing the model and the PEL name, which as a default is the model and serial number, but this can be modified, as can the location. Next, we have the Auto Power Off section. This refers to the screen shutdown time, which can be set to 3, 10 or 15 minutes. If you click one of these, during a recording session the screen will go blank after the selected time, but recordings will of course continue. Aggregated Max Mode is the next option. On the PEL 103, there's an icon on the front screen, which, when selected, shows the maximum recorded values for the installation that the PEL is connected to. There are two options for this. If Aggregated Max Values Updated While Recording Only is selected, then during a recording session you can look at what the maximum values have been for any of the recorded parameters for example, current, voltage, etc., but this is only during the recorded period. If aggregated max values updated all the time is selected, you'll see the maximum values, whether during the recording period or during the time the PEL was connected to the installation but not recording. If you move to a new installation, it makes sense to reset the aggregated max values with the button shown here, so these values are not compromised by data from a previous installation. The PEL comes with an 8 gig SD card, which is more than enough for most instances, and is already formatted. But if you change it for a new one, make sure that it's formatted before use. A point to note here, SD cards degrade over a period of time. It's suggested that you change the SD card after every 30 or so recordings. We'll look at save to file and load from file in another video, as they're more appropriate after a recording session has been completed. By selecting the Communication tab, the PEL can be set so that it can be communicated with remotely. By enabling Bluetooth, the PEL can talk with an Android device via a free app, giving access to real-time data and allow recording sessions to be set up, started and stopped. There's also an Ethernet socket, allowing the PEL to connect directly to a local network. And this will allow either direct access through the PEL to the network or alternatively, it can be remotely accessed from literally anywhere using port forwarding. The measurement tab is where you tell the instrument what type of installation you're going to connect to. There are various types. Single phase, three phase star or three phase delta, three or four wire. You can also select two, three or four wire DC. If you're connecting to a DC installation, you will need special DC clamps, rather than the flexi clamps that come with the PEL as standard. For this demonstration, I'll choose a three-phase four-wire installation. And you can see from the diagram exactly how to connect the PEL to the installation. In this section, you can set up voltage transformer ratios in the event that you're connecting to a high voltage supply through a VT, or voltage transformer. There are a number of current sensors available for the PEL to suit different requirements. As with previous VT settings, it's also possible to set a current transformer or CT ratio in the event that you're connecting to high current networks through CTs. 
If you're connecting to CTs within the installation, you can either connect directly to them or we'll need to use MN93 A clamps and enter the ratio of the CT clamp you're connecting to here. For the majority of situations where you're putting flexi clamps directly around the installation cables, you will not need to set any ratios and the PEL will automatically detect the current clamps you've plugged in. You should, however, select the expected maximum current for the installation here, and this will ensure the readings taken are the best resolution available. So if you have an installation that's likely to have 1000 amps flowing at any time, you'd select the 2000 amp setting. For 200 amps, you'd select 400 amps, and so on. As standard, the PEL comes with three Miniflex Rogowski coils that will measure anything from 100 milliamps to 10,000 amps, and so will suit a very wide range of applications. If you're measuring very low currents, you can wrap the Rogowski coils around the conductors a maximum of three times to increase the sensitivity. And if you do, simply select the number of wraps here so that the PEL knows and will adjust the measurements automatically. Clicking on the Recording tab, we can now give our recording an actual name. Here I've called it Office 1. And if you want, you can tick the increment box, so each subsequent recording will automatically get named Office 2 and so on. A useful time-saving feature. You have a number of options for the recording period. Either tell the PEL to start recording now for a certain length of time, in this case one week, but that can be changed by clicking the drop-down menu. Or we can also schedule a recording to start and stop at a particular time and date. Next, you will need to choose an aggregation period. The instrument takes samples every 78 microseconds. However, this would create an enormous amount of data. By setting an aggregation period, the PEL will plot a value which is an aggregate of all those samples over, for example, a one-minute period. The aggregation period can be set as high as 60 minutes. Nothing is overlooked, however, as it will still store an absolute minimum and maximum value within that one-minute plot. If you require more in-depth analysis, you can select to additionally record one-second trends by checking this box, and also include information on harmonics up to the 50th order by checking the box below. You can see here two storage indication bars. The top bar shows the amount of space already used on the installed SD card. The second bar shows how much of the SD card will be used for the selected recorded session. The lower the aggregation period and the longer the recorded session, the more space will be used. This is a really useful feature to ensure there is enough space on the SD card to store all of the data required for a particular recording session. The final tick box to mention here determines if the product will record only total harmonic distortion levels or detailed values for harmonics up to the 50th order. If the box is unchecked, the PEL will report THD up to the 50th harmonic. If it's checked, it will record the values of each harmonic individually. As you can see, by clicking that box, the extra data to be recorded will require significantly more space on the SD card. The final tab is meters. The PEL records the duration of power on, as well as voltage and current presence, and also contains energy meters that store data for the last recorded session, in the case of the partial energy meters, or the total energy for a number of recording sessions with the total energy meter. Here you can choose to manually reset those meters, or leave them to reset automatically at the start of each recording session. Now that we've set up the PEL, you can save those settings by giving them a specific file name enabling various frequently used configurations to be saved and they're loaded back into the product as and when required. The final step is to click OK, which will transfer all of the settings you've just made to the PEL. And then you can connect it to the installation and start some logging.